Hello, hello. You're listening to the Drink a Little podcast, where we talk about exploring the world of wine and spirits while not letting it take over your life. My name is Kelly Doherty. I'm a joyful child of God and a certified life coach. I'm also a wine educator and a wine and spirits brand designer. I'll show you how you can navigate your relationship with alcohol and how that mindset spills over into the rest of your life. We'll learn about the world of wine and spirits together, all while bolstering your confidence that you can have boundaries around alcohol and live your most amazing life. This is episode 11, Chenin Blanc. Today we'll do a little tasting and explore the 2022 Nieflingshof Estate Chenin Blanc from Stellenbosch, South Africa. And we'll find out how this leads us into a discussion on shame. That thing we are all uncomfortable to talk about, but don't touch that pause button. It'll be okay. And you'll get to laugh at me along the way. So first the wine tasting. And if you can um, picture this bottle, it is a white wine, Chenin Blanc, classic uh, grape variety from South Africa. And this is one of those classic labels to go with it. It's got the black and white hand drawing of the vineyards and the trees as you enter the beautiful estate. And then at the top, it's got one of those new world, new age screw caps. So I think it's the perfect pairing. And what I love about um, sharing this wine is that it is 100% estate grown near Stellenbosch, South Africa. And this is a hilly region, just a short drive from Cape Town. And really building a reputation for fine wines, fine reds, and fine white. So we'll taste a white today. And I tried to find photos that I've taken in the Stellenbosch region and in the abyss that is my digital data. I haven't found them yet, but if I do, I will post them. So we'll give it a little taste. I have um, chilled this bottle and then I took it out of the fridge, opened it up to breathe maybe 10 or 15 minutes. So we'll give it a smell here. After the swirl, it's definitely a beautiful honeysuckle on the nose. And tasting it, this is, when people say fresh bouquet, sometimes wine descriptions are not so descriptive, but when they say fresh bouquet, they mean this wine. And so I literally picture one of those little fruit gift baskets. And this is it. It's peach. It's pineapple. It's got some of that, that soft yellow apple in there. Maybe a little, maybe a little nectarine. This would be gorgeous with any salad, but I'm thinking um, those salads that have the mandarin oranges from the can and they've got the little crispy wonton, fried wonton pieces in there. It'd be perfect with one of those salads. For tonight, I have to say, honestly, I had this with some guac and chips and that worked perfectly fine. So the world may run out of guacamole the way I'm going through it. But yes, get this wine. It is a gorgeous white that's not so high in acidity that it is um, shocking. So it's super well balanced. And I wanted to share what this wine brought up for me. I have a lot of South African people in my world, a lot of friends, and they have this beautiful phrase that they use. And it goes like this. It goes, ach, shame. And sometimes they use just shame as a full sentence. And to them, it's somewhat of an endearing term. Sometimes it's kind of like bless their heart in the South or with a little bit of, gosh, I'm so sorry you're going through this. Ah, shame, you know. And then sometimes it's appropriate when someone just got the cutest, sweetest little puppy. And then it's like, ah, shame. How cute. So they don't mean that in the heavy sense of, uh, sense of the word shame, but their endearing phrase while I was tasting this wine, came to mind and it got me to thinking about how we don't talk about shame in our culture. Everyone does feel it at different times and sometimes for long periods of time. 
And we're not talking about it unless you're Brene Brown. Yes, she's the amazing goddess of heart centered <laughs> research. Um, so, a lot of times, over drinking stems from shame. There's a cycle of perfectionism that leads to not feeling that we're enough, that leads to drinking for some people, that leads to eating for some people. Um, and then that leads to hiding the drinking. And that may lead to shame, which leads to more perfectionism. That was a mouthful. <laughs> and I am definitely working on the perfectionism still. Somebody tell me they're in this boat with me. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that any striving is internally motivated because healthy striving is internally motivated, internally driven. And perfectionism striving is externally driven. So that perfectionism is coming from thought like, what will people think? It stems from what will people be thinking? And therefore, we try to do those things to make work look perfect, to live perfect, so we can avoid any of the messy life stuff like judgment and shame. And the issue is we all have those messy feelings, no matter what, much more than we'd like to admit. And so we really can't avoid it. And where perfectionism exists, Brene Brown says, shame is always lurking. So that quote was really kind of itching at me a few years ago. Itching at me like, you know, it's annoyingly true and you'd like to ignore it. But things always come up in life when they are supposed to come up. And so I have an embarrassing story to tell you that really shifted perfectionism for me. So I have worked for a winery for many years. And for many years, I have done behind the scenes tours where we look at the vineyard and we talk about the growing practices. We look at the production facility and the barrels and all that good behind the scenes stuff. How does that wine get into the bottle? It's fascinating. And it's one of those things that I'm still healthfully striving to learn about. And I was on a tour a couple of years ago and I had just two people and the winemaker called me and said, well, you know, there's some stuff in the fermentation tank that is ready to taste. Why don't you just tap that tank when you're on their tour, give them this, this great taste. And I said, okay, told me how to do it on the phone. And I was like, I've got it. And I am in the tour with these lovely people and I'm in the moment. I'm just in flow talking about whatever story I'm talking about. And I think I do with my hands what I was told on the phone. And I open a little valve and wine comes shooting out into my face at a very high pressure level. And it's very quickly all over my body. and. So I don't have time to be embarrassed at that moment. I'm figuring out how to get the plug and the valve back together, which I do. And we didn't lose that much wine, but it was just enough wine to totally soak my body and totally embarrass me. So um, I went back up to the tasting room and I had friends that asked me why I was so wet <laughs> because we don't have a pool nearby. What could have possibly happened? You never know what's going to happen on a tour. Uh, these amazing people that were with me were very compassionate. We continued and finished the tour. And then my inclination years ago would have been to clean up the mess and not talk about it, like be done. Because if the mess is cleaned up, then it didn't happen and everything's still perfect, right? But lots of messes in our lives are there to teach us something. and shouldn't be swept under the rug or in this case into the drain. And so the the perfectionism and shame shift for me was that I could have easily made that incident mean something terrible about me that I'm stupid 
that I don't listen, that I should have known better after all this time, that I, I could have made it mean, like, I can't believe I don't know how to do that. I embarrass my company. And sometimes we want to go in that turtle shell of shame because we don't think we're supposed to fail. But the people that were with me didn't think I failed. And we're supposed to fail. We're supposed to make mistakes and laugh and bring things to light and have compassion for ourselves and have compassion for others. And bringing those things to light is just one way to step out of that perfectionism shame cycle. The hiding actually perpetuates it. So in this case, instead of going home and drinking that embarrassment, you know how we drink our feelings or we eat our feelings. I called my top three favorite people and reenacted the whole thing, much to their delight and laughter. And that laughter at my own expense just let the cork off the bottle of my embarrassment and it really relaxed me. I'm human. I made a mistake. No one was hurt. It super could have been prevented and it super could have been a lot worse. But it just is. That's just what happened. And to just accept it as that's what happened was huge. And I think about that moment standing there in front of strangers soaking wet with wine when I dip into that perfectionism occasionally nowadays. And I just laugh. It gives me that moment to get curious about the moment of perfectionism I'm in at, right now and what's, what's really going on, what's really underneath that. and taking that almost like 30,000 foot view of yourself and choosing how you want to deal with the situation. And when we're looking at our behaviors, almost from an external standpoint, if we're trying to be perfect about things, that kills our curiosity. We've been socialized to think we need to know everything or risk looking like a fool. And it leaves us in a perpetually scared place. And it actually leaves us kind of boring. I have to say that day was not boring for myself, a lot of people around me, and definitely the guests will never forget me. So I do want to ask, like, what if you were a fool today? What could happen? What's the worst thing that could happen? What is it that you are hiding from? And how is this imperfection right now actually kind of perfect for you right now? If we question where that feeling of shame can lead us, it can open us up to the possibilities of moving through the shame and not creating a stuck cycle of perfectionism and shame that we repeat over and over again. Okay, that's what I have for you, my friends, this week. Next week, we are tasting a famous wine, the Chateau Montalena Chardonnay from Napa, and we will talk about why it is famous and what that means for you in managing your emotions and your relationship with wine. So let's create a balanced relationship. And if you're working on shame, perfectionism, anything you're working on creating your life, I do teach on a deeper level a one-on-one coaching program tailored to your needs where we cover how to stop over drinking, how to love yourself for all the right reasons, and emotional well-being. So go to kellydoherty.com slash cheers to learn more. That's K-E-L-L-Y-D-O-H-E-R-T-Y dot com forward slash cheers. I will see you next week. Bye.